Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Andy's Shed Live. This is the first of a new series, Series 9 Episode 1. This one for Sunday the 11th of July 2021. Hello there everybody, welcome back to the show. It's been a few weeks but we're back, uh, as always, back here from... Uh, from uh, our location somewhere in the heart of Derbyshire. Bit of a dodgy start there. I've got no microphone for some reason. Got no sound. Um, but hopefully you can uh, you can all hear me now. And uh, hopefully we'll be coming through loud and clear. I uh, well, that's what I'm hoping anyway. As we uh, as we go through uh, the show this evening. Now, I've got to uh, I've got to apologise because. It's not quite the show we had planned tonight. We've just had a power outage here, literally about 20 minutes ago, and it's caused all kinds of havoc. So <coughs> we're a bit flying by the seat of our pants at the minute, so if we suddenly disappear, it's because the power's gone out again. Um, not had power cuts here for ages and ages and ages and ages, and we've had a power outage, and it also knocked the cell phone signals out as well. It only sort of blipped off and on again, but it was enough to upset all the electronics and everything. So uh, I'm not quite sure what's been uh, what's been happening there. Um, hello to everybody in the chat. Who've we got? Jimmy's here. Dominic's here. Uh, Penfold's here. Christopher Two Thousands here. Wesley's here. So quite a few people there in the chat already. Um, you can either look at it on the YouTube chat, or if you're watching this after the event. <coughs> sorry, I've got a bit of a cough. If you're watching this after the event, um, people used to say to me. We can't see the chat because we're watching on a smart TV and things like that. Well, that's why it's there. Um, so um, so you can see the chat there if you're watching on your smart TV or, or mobile device or whatever that doesn't display a playback of the chat. Right, so we will crack on with it, shall we? As ever here at Andy Shed, you can get in touch with us either drop us a comment somewhere in below the video or wherever it is these days or you can get in touch with us via our website the website as ever and is shed.callpress.net that's the place to go to uh, to get in touch with us and uh, remember you can also support us on patreon these days too if you uh, like what you see here and you want to support future episodes get your name on the titles and get some exclusive extra content as well um, then uh, go here um, patreon.com forward slash Andy's Shed <coughs> to get extra content there as well so you can get you can get all sorts of things um, there and also you know how I said the shop was supposed to be having a makeover well while we've been off air it's actually happened go and take a look at the uh, online shop Andy's Emporium dot press dot net that is the place to go for the online shop. And it's had a rather smart new makeover. And uh, more stuff is going to be coming into the shop soon. If you're into model railways, if you're into narrow gauge model railways particularly, go take a look at the shop um, because there's some brilliant little kits for a 009 scale um, in there. So go and take a look at that if you want to. And also some telephone bits for sale there as well. Right, talking of telephone bits, we've had a few arrivals um, while you've not been here. Um, and Hermes have been up to their old tricks again. Um, so that's going to be the main, uh, the main thing that we're going to be uh, talking about tonight, I think. Um, because this arrived in the post, if I can get it. Yes, and it's smashed. Because, me being me, I didn't realise that it was a ceramic when I bought it. So, I've got a missing bit of, bit of it here. And a lot of the rest of it is broken as well. And now, I've tried plugging this phone in. And we do get a 
a tone out of it, a dialed tone sort of thing, but it's like it's off the hook all the time because inside it, the thing that it, um, the circuit board that it should touch on, that the mechanism's not there. So I don't know if we've got a bit of mechanism missing or what we've got there. So we're going to have a little look at that tonight and see if we can sort that out. Um, before we do so, uh, I'll see what everybody's been up to in the chat. Oh, Paul, Paul's joined us as well. Paul Nolan, he's with us. Um, Dominic says, uh, it's a shame the Sheffield Steam Rally was cancelled a couple of weeks ago. Yes, Dominic. Um, uh, for those of you that don't know, Sheffield Steam Rally was supposed to be on this year. And it was going to go ahead and the organisers were up at the site, putting everything up, putting all the tents and things up. And some bot from Rotherham Council came along and said, We want you to comply with all these extra restrictions. And uh, and, uh, and yes, you, you've got like two days to do it in. And of course, they just couldn't comply with all the extra restrictions that Rotherham Council were throwing on them. So they said, all right, we can't do that, take it all down, go home. So basically, that is what they did. So the people who cancelled Sheffield Steam Rally this year were Rotherham Council. So you can't go outside and stand in a field and have a steam rally and all be socially distanced, but 70,000 people can pack side by side into Wembley Stadium. Go figure. All right. Um, right. Uh, what's everybody else uh, saying? Cracky, the chat's moving a bit quick tonight. Um, Paul says, Hi everyone, hope all is well. Following on from Andrea's uh, Patreon videos, I confirm that phones have reproduced. Yeah, they certainly have, Paul. They've definitely reproduced. Uh, I now have a rather splendid All Original Red 746L. Brilliant. There's a 746L on its way to me as well. A red one. Another one. That will be the second one that I've managed to get hold of. An L. Um, more about that maybe next week if it's arrived. Um, um, Dominic says, Speaking of the red 746Ls, I found that GPO film with the red 746L being installed in the early 1970s. Excellent, Dominic. You found it. You want it being installed on the farm. That's uh, that. That's good. That proves they existed. That does. Apart from the fact I've got a few here, but that proves they existed to the people that say, "Oh, they never existed. They were never like that." Well, that's the film that proved that they were. Um. Um. Christopher says he's got to get a picture of the GPO uh, 64D bell that he's got. Um, um, and he's got to get some pictures from the signal box at Lilydale Station as well. Lilydale being in Australia, of course, because Christopher is out there in Oz. Dominic says, busybodies at the council. Yeah. Um... Cool, right, I think I'm more or less caught up with what's going on in the chat there. Um, yeah, so basically things have been off on that this last couple of weeks and that. And um, and at the moment, um, things are looking like they're going to be staying off for quite some time here. Um, I don't know what you've all been doing while, uh, while we've been off air, but basically I've been in hiding. Uh, because with the new surge in coronavirus cases and with us now having a government that seemed to want us all to catch it and die um, um, and with so many idiots out there millions of the, this country has got millions of idiots in it um, yeah, then uh, I've been uh, I've been in hiding shall we say so um, because people are now coming out, they're going to pubs and that, they're all mixing, there's no social distancing, all that kind of crap, la 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 la. So basically now, it's more dangerous meeting up with somebody than it was 
at the height of all the restrictions and that, you've got more chance of catching the virus now than ever before. So that's a, that's a real problem now for me. So I'm, I'm really, really, really locking down now, big style, um, and keeping away from absolutely everybody. Um, um, Christopher says there was a refurbished brown 746 L he saw on eBay. Um, no, there wasn't. There's no such thing as a 746L in brown. Um, Grey, perhaps. <coughs> um, but the brown 746s didn't come out until the 1980s. And the lettered bezels are gone long before then. Um, so there's no such thing as a brown 746L. If you see a brown 746L, it's either a grey one that's got a funny colour that's got a brown colour. Or it's something that's just not right at all. Um, Claws is with us. He uh, says, yes, a million idiots all trying to kill each other. Yes, they are, aren't they? Like that 70,000 idiots that are in Wembley Stadium tonight to watch 22 grown men kick a bag of wind from one end of a field to another. Um, yes, you can tell what I think of it, can't you? This is a sport-free channel. There'll be no mention of it. Uh, um, yes, right. So we'll crack on with what we were what we were going to be doing uh, today, then, shall we? Which is the uh, the restoration of this uh, of this phone here. And basically, what we need to do is take it apart and then rebuild this um, this. Uh, it's not China. It's some kind of ceramic or something. Or it might even be some sort of organic resin or something. I don't know. It looks like it's some kind of some kind of ceramic, I think. Um, so we're going to have a go at rebuilding this. Learning what I've learnt from the lady on the repair shop that does it all. Uh, you know, that restores all the vases and things on the repair shop. So I'm, I'm taking what I've learnt from her. And, uh, and we're going to have a crack at, uh, at doing this. Um, um, Dominic says he's replaced a candlestick phone too. Um, right, so, right, what we've basically got here is a phone that was made in the 1980s part of the gpo special range phones um i believe it's basically a dial 21 i know it doesn't look like it but it is um so what we've got to do is try and get this phone apart because everything is wonky and loose on it um there are um various screws in the bottom but I think we'll start by trying to get these ones off in the middle of the feet because I think there's a chance that they are going to be the ones um, with, that uh, all the base actually on so and they are I believe it or not um, Phillips screws. So I've got to get the other bit in my screwdriver. People sometimes ask me where this screwdriver came from, this little pen thing with all the bits in the handle and that. Because um, they big Clive uses one of those as well on his YouTube channel. Where do you get those from? This, this one came out of the pound shop and it was a pound. Um, I bought two or three. I don't know if they still sell them or not. It's a while since. Because obviously, it's a while since I've been into a pound shop. <laughs> so, um, right. I'm doing this sort of upside down and backwards in an attempt to uh, make it possible for you to see it.
it's a long screw so I think it does hold on more than the foot uh -huh. Oop, there we go self tapping screw self tapping screw so we'll have a few more of these out of here This is not an Onyx foam. Onyx are the ones that are made out of uh, that sort of green stone stuff. Well, Onyx. Um, but this is not Onyx. This, this is a similar idea in style of foam. But it seems to be a... Seems to be a... Uh, ceramic body who got the idea of making the body out of ceramic I have no idea it does seem a bit silly to me though <laughs> right that does indeed get the base off now what's happened I think is that there that's the thing that should tip the, the that in there should push down. I don't know if you can see that up there. Can you see that thing in there? That just there. That is I get it under the camera. When you push the uh, push the rest down the switch up that moves you see and that movement should push on that pad and do all the necessary and that is basically the workings of a phone not much on there actually is there but there is a chip on it which is interesting. I wonder what that chip does. But you can see the dial has basically it would seem been glued in with all this really gungy glue. So How do we now get that out of there? Right, the first thing with the dial that we'll try and do uh, is get the get the little uh, the little cover off, the little uh, label cover, the opal, as they call it. Um, then. can remove the label it just says ETC on it I don't know if that's a manufacturer and then there's a screw of course as usual under there so get me screwdriver again get me me flat bit this time which is that one Stick that in there, and then we can hopefully get this screw out. And although this looks like metal, it's not, it's plastic. And then from there you can see it's a fairly standard dial 21 underneath. I've got the little clip. 
then you've got to see about how you might undo it all. Now, here's the, here's the face piece going to fall out. Now it should. That should now fall out. Yep, yeah, there it is. Oh, and it's the later nasty plasticky eyes dial. Um, and that is glued in, I believe, from what I can tell, into the body of the phone. So there's no real way you can get that out. You can see all the like hot glue stuff that's holding that in. But there are two big screws up inside there. If I can turn that around, you can see them. Two screws up inside there that hopefully will take the rest off. Um, so, if I can undo those, and one of them's loose already, but if I can undo those, or even just part undo them, now things are starting to fall apart again now, another bit of ceramic here. Yeah. I'm going to put that all ceramic up there for a minute because what we're trying to do is separate out the ceramics. That is now all of this. Now that doesn't seem to do much so I've got to figure out how that comes apart because I'm pretty sure it will come apart that will we'll figure that one out later like I've got to remove the dial off the circuit board here so this circuit board then on the bottom from left to right it's grey brown orange pinky colour yeah grey brown orange pink from left to right across the bottom so we'll make a little note of that. I'll get a bit of scrap paper and we'll make a note. So that's the bottom of the thing. So it's grey, brown, orange, pink. On the four terminals there. Right, shall we try and take those off? Grey, brown, orange, pink. So that's released this piece now. So now this bit, the handset and the base now, I can temporarily get rid of. Now, and what I'm left 
left with now here is mainly the pottery bit that is absolutely smashed to smithereens as you can as you can see um, now the glue is holding it together a bit but what I've got to do is take it apart and this hot glue stuff on it is still sort of semi soft so I'm hoping we can get the little blobs off like that so there's a bit of the ceramic so what I'm going to try and do is get all this stuff off here and remove the dial and then we'll try and put the broken bits back together Paul says, there's raw plugs in that ceramic, a recipe for successful cracks, and I've never seen a dial glued into position before. Makes the GPO standard cases look well engineered. It certainly does, Paul. But by this time, you see, these phones were not designed to be maintained. You bought these phones, in general. Um, so, you know they didn't worry about maintaining them because you bought them you know when it broke they said oh well, I'll throw it in the bin or we'll sell you another one um, this stuff is really well stuck have they used so much of this like slimy stuff that's what I want to know somewhere just get in. if I can just get it started I'm pretty sure it'll it'll come off but it's getting it started it's like I don't know it's like green slime <laughs> it's really disgusting stuff see and I don't want to have to put any kind of thinners or anything on it to try and to try and dislodge the glue because if I do that I'm likely to damage the plastics that are involved in this very plasticky dial so what I really want to do is just if I can just get this stuff off Interestingly, it doesn't seem to 
the stick so well to the ceramic. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. And it really is just glued in place. And there you go. There's the remains of the dial with all the glue on it and it's in a some kind of bezel but how is that bezel put together is the question so all of this stuff that needs to start coming off anybody got any ideas how to get this off <laughs> It's horrible. Um, Claw says this must be the beginning of the cheap and nasty era. Um, uh, foams yes it it is claws this is why I don't generally have these uh, sort of foams but this one was cheap <laughs> um, glued inside and self tapping screws yeah uh, that, that's basically about the size of it uh, Dominic says most of the novelty phones do have poor build quality yeah and this one's no exception. <laughs> uh, um, it will not come off this stuff. I've got no idea how I might get this off without damaging the plasticky bezel thing that it's that it's on and I can't put a new dial on because I need this bezel bit which is different um, and which The dial seems to be sitting in. I'm not quite sure how this is actually put together. Um, hmm. Interesting. The screw or something rattling about inside this as well. Um, so how do I get at it? Right, that is a damned good question. I think I've got to sort of just prise it off somehow like that
chunk of it off. dial itself is just sitting in the middle of it but I'm not I'm not totally certain um, but this glue is nasty say I can't dissolve the glue with anything because I run the risk of dissolving what looks to you like brass but is actually plastic um, they didn't mean this falling out did they prise up the edge of the dial cover because it doesn't seem to stick to that terribly well <laughs> um, says Derek Trotter and only fools and horses had an onyx and a candlestick phone in the early 80s speaks volumes yes it does he liked to collect crap didn't he uh, um, yes all right all right let's carry on we'll get there in the end um, I don't know how it comes apart. I've got no idea. Because <clears throat> this outer bezel bit here, this outer bezel bit here, seems to be one piece with all this on the back here. And when you look on the other side, I'm not sure if that's not the same as this white, but this white bit is held into that somehow is it glued to it because the white bit is actually the dial but I've got no idea what's going on but these are really cheap and nasty dials <coughs> look at the finger stop here one screw holding it in and the other thing is just a pip in the plastic so you take one screw out, 
which I might do actually because taking the finger stop off might release something Dooby dooby doo, talk amongst yourselves a minute. All exciting stuff. Right, I've got that off. Now. And now you can see that the white, which is the actual, actual dial, is glued down to, by the looks of it, this surround. But. So, we're not going to get that out of the surround, are we? So, we're going to have to rebuild that dial in this surround and stick it back in. Hmm, that's not very nice. The idea of that, I'm not keen on that thought. Um, nearly got the cover off the back of the dial. That is normally so easy to do. And the little screw that's rolling around in it is the screw out of the um, out of the dial contacts there it's that little screw because for some reason there's only four connections on this dial so that one isn't connected to anything and it looks like it's been left loose and the screw had fell out so I'm going to Put that screw back in so it's there. Right, so now I can get this off. Push them through there and we've managed to remove this bit with the strudel. Now, normally on a dial, these come off quite easily, um, but not in this case. But the great thing about this is the, that nasty glue doesn't seem to stick to this. So that's pretty good. That's helped me. Right. So. We'll carry on doing this, I think. While we carry on, probably time for you to take a short break. Be back in just a moment. And we are back. And I'm still fighting with this glue. Um, it's truly horrible stuff. Anybody got any ideas on how to do this? The chat has gone very quiet. All of a sudden, I think, I think everybody's just watching in amazement at how rubbish this phone is inside.
Now they've all gone very quiet. Just got to work it and try and pull at it. Properly horrible stuff. <laughs> it's, it's truly, truly horrible. Come back for the three in conclusion. Um, Dominic <laughs> says, "How are your potatoes, Andy? They're doing fine, Dominic. They're growing. They're they're in flower at the moment. Or the flowers flowers are dying off on them now. But yeah, the potatoes doing flat doing fine. Um, we'll." Have a little visit out into the garden in a in a uh, in a live sometime fairly soon. And Paul says, does anyone know what year the GPO or BT by then actually stopped making dials? That's a good question. Did they ever make them? Because they were sort of made by outside companies, weren't they? You know, the people who made the phones. Look at this. I'm um, like Dennis Ferranti and uh, Pi and all that lot but I don't know exactly but I think I think they stopped making them probably in the mid 80s about 85, 86 ish but that's just a guess So you, you're all not going to buy one of these now if you see one, aren't you? And go, oh no, I'm not buying that. They're horrible inside. started anyway I wonder if a knife would cut it trouble is I run the risk of cutting the blooming plastic then as well so I'd rather Pull it off, lever it off, and pull it off if I can. Um, Paul says, I've got a call box dial in its original box from 1986 which is the latest dial I've ever seen. Um, yeah, that's interesting, that is, Paul. Um, 1986. I think that probably would have been about the end of production. But there have been a lot of call box dials about at the minute as well. Um, you know, that you see a a dial for sale on eBay and you think it's a dial 12 to first look because it's got a, a stainless steel finger wheel and then you look a bit closer and you realize it's uh, the call box version of a dial 21 I just can't remember the numbers and that of them at the minute because it's not a 21 because it's a call box version and the way to tell is because the call box ones had a, a much more chunky um, one of these a much more chunky opal in the middle that was basically solid and it had a hole in the middle of it uh, and, and an allen bolt through that you had to undo with an allen uh, with an allen key 
to try and stop people interfering with them. Um, a bit more off um, we're getting there gradually aren't we I'm finding what you've got to do is basically just try and get underneath it and, and then pull at it like that. <laughs> it's really nasty stuff though. I've never seen anything built this shoddy. I mean there's no way. If you needed to replace this dial on this phone, there's just no way you'd do it. <coughs> Which of course is what I am doing. Well, um, Christopher says he's found all the railway signal boxes in Australia have GPO 640 bell sets in them. Interesting stuff. A lot of GPO stuff did, or GPO design stuff, did find its way to Australia. It must be something about glued in dials you're having at the moment, because if you remember just before we came off air for the break and I, I had the GPO um, or in, in that special video that I did I had that uh, Australian 400 series that's also got a glued in dial that I need to get out so there must be something about gluing dials in at the moment never had a glued in dial before and like the last couple of things I've got both had glued in dial. Right. Well, I've got some of it off now, so you can kind of see what I'm left with there. The gold bit of plastic that the dial has been glued into the middle of it. <coughs> um. So I don't think you ever get that out again. But at least you can get to all the working bits of the dial now. And, and that. So I'm going to put the dial to one side for now. While we now have a look at some of the other bits. Right. Let me go and get rid of some of this rubbish um, and uh, and while I do go and get rid of some of this rubbish um, we'll take another short break. We'll be back in just a moment. And we're back. Hello. <coughs> right. So, what we're going to do now then is, when I find the right button to press on here, a wrong button, that one's the one I want, um, is we're going to look at doing something with all these ceramic bits. Uh, I'm trying to figure out. how it all goes together. So I think that bit 
probably goes there. That bit goes there. That bit goes there. And there must be some little bits that I'm missing that were that were hidden underneath here that I've not got. So we'll have to rebuild that with something. And then I've got this then that would go up under here. So what we're going to do, that's basically how we do it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take some uh, two-part epoxy resin. Um, I got this out of the pound shop and it's some of the best epoxy resin you can get because <coughs> it starts out liquid. <coughs> so about my cough. I've got a bit. I've had hay fever. And, and the hay fever is now on its way out, but it leaves me with a bit of a cough. Um, so what we're going to do then is take this resiny stuff. Bump some resin into here. And it's equal amounts resin and hardener this so you put some resin in and then you get the hardener and you squeeze some hardener in which is a different color Then you can mix those together, and that's your two part epoxy. And what we're going to do then is I've got to work quite quickly now because this starts to go off fairly fast. Um, what we're going to do now is work out where. We need to put this on the joint. Yeah, and if you're doing this on a really porous kind of pottery or, or any porous surface, it's best if you put the resin on both the surfaces that you're wanting to stick. So that goes on there. And we put a bit on here. As well. Can you see what I'm doing? Sorry, I wasn't doing that under the camera, was I? Um, that on there as is reasonable and then just put the piece in place and it should when you get it in the right place fit and you want the resin just ooze out a little bit as well and it should just kind of sit there right I'm going to do this little bit next that goes in here. Okay.
and I've run out of time this is going off so I'm going to see if I can just stick that in with it just on one surface What I'm going to do when I find it, I'll have some sellers to say, or sticky tape is the next uh, thing that you want. And what I'm going to do is just take some bits of sticky tape just to hold it all together. tape there like that and we'll use these now to sort of just hold this Should be. Right, and that resin has set. It's really fast setting stuff, but it it's already set that in there. I don't know if you can if you can see that. So what I'm going to do, and it's hot as well, is get that resin out of there. You see, it's set and it's warm, that. Um, so now I've got a clean tub again. And I can now put some more in to do this big break on this half. And put all that back together. So again, resin. I hope I've got enough left here to do it. Otherwise, I'll have to get some more out. There's resin. I think we've used that up. Mix that together. This has been clear previously when I've done it, but this particular resin is sort of yellow and pink. But it sort of dries white by the looks of things. It might even go totally clear when it dries. Sometimes it does. So, I'm now using my pot of resin again to just get some on. And it, yes, it is going to splurge out of the joints. And what happens is once it has splurged out of the joints, 
and it's kind of set then um, you go around it later with a, a little knife, a little scalpel or something and just carefully cut off the excess So now, get that under there. See, so work quickly. Get the resin on. Two part epoxy. See, that little bit there is actually broken off. I can just run a bit something into there Missed a bit there. Yeah. Get that quickly. What you have to do is really push it together. So the stuff that you've put in kind of splurges out. original piece I put in I'm not really happy with because it doesn't seem to have gone quite where I wanted it to but all right there it is anyway so that now it has to set and while well, that's set in um, it's a good time for me to go and uh, go and get cleaned up because I'm a little sticky so I'll let you uh, basically watch that set for a second while I go and get to uh, I go and get myself cleaned up. Just bear with me one second.
Right, okay. So, that's as much, I think, as we can do for today on that. But that original joint that I did, now you see, is there. It sets so fast that you've got to be really, really quick at doing it. Um, so that will have to be cleaned up when it's all dried and filled. And then we can start cold painting it to try and restore it. So uh, that's what we've got to basically try and do. Right, that's a lot of people are saying in the chat. Uh, Christopher says, did you get me your mail about the Oaks in one nine hundred? Yeah, I did, Christopher. I've got lots of emails at the minute that have uh, that have come in while we've been off air. Um, but because of the power outage that we had this afternoon here, I did <coughs> not manage to get them uh, into the system and that. Um, but hopefully for next week we'll have all the photos. And there are a lot of photos to show you from people next week. Um... Um, Paul says, did you ever get around to hand making your line and handset cords for the candlesticks? Um, not yet, Paul. It's on my list of things to do, um, but I've not got the stuff uh, for it yet. But I am going to have a go at that. Um, Wesley says, is there some kind of ceramic filler available for the small sections on that that you're putting together? Um, yes, Wesley. Um, basically, it's the acrylic filler, actually, um, what they use. Um, <coughs> it's an acrylic filler, and they use acrylic paints as well, generally. Um, but yeah, yeah, there, there is there is a filler. I mean, it won't actually need that much filling, because what has happened is um, the bits have... Um, kind of the stuff has, has splodged out so it's raised now um, so there'll not be a massive amount of filling required what might need filling is that first bit that I put on that first bit because it's not gone quite in the right place um, in fact I'm very tempted to try and take that piece out and redo it actually um, but I don't think I can now, so I think we'll we'll have to live with it. Unless I took the whole thing apart again, which I really don't want to do. Um, so yeah, so so it's an acrylic filler basically that you use on them. Um, it's all go. Uh, Dominic's headed off. Uh, I don't know if, he, if he's still with us at the moment. Um, um, he says, have a good week, everyone. Have a good week yourself, Dominic. We'll see you next time. Right. So, I think this is basically going together. So, we'll, we'll come back to this next week and have a look at it again next week and see how it's, uh, how it's getting on, shall we? And that, well, that is basically the restoration of one of these phones. If anybody does know, if anybody does know how to get all the gunge and that off these dials, then uh, get in touch with us. Either leave a comment or uh, go on the website and fill in the contact form there. andyshed.callpress.net Cool. Right. It's all systems go, isn't it? I'm just piddling more bits of it off now. Yeah. Yeah, so there's all sorts. What else have we got in the telephone line? Um, oh, a bit of finger trouble there. Um, we've got all sorts of, uh, of phones that have come in um, just recently. Um, as I say, there's the Australian 400 series, which is still down here. And this has got a similar problem. This has had 
a UK dial, a British dial, stuck into it, a dial 21 stuck into it, literally, again, glued in, that I need to unglue somehow and sort it out. Um, but these are the type of cords that we're going to be making, these, these kind of plaited cords. And it's not quite a plait, it's not as simple as that. Um, they're what we're going to be making for the... Uh, for the candlestick phones soon so we're going to be uh, going to be having a go at that <coughs> uh, right let me go back to the bottom of the chat um, uh, yeah all right cool we're there we, we've we've managed it right I think that is about a wrap for this week I've got more stuff now to clean up just it just pulls off it's really good how it you can just if you put it in a little plastic pot like this and just flex the pot then you can you can get it off before it goes totally solid so i think that's about it for this week thanks to everybody for watching i know it's only been a short ish show today um but as i say we had a few technical issues um, before we started and um, and uh, basically a lack of uh, power but uh, we are upgrading things here as well that's the, that's the other thing that I haven't told you we are doing an upgrade sat down here you can't see it but sat down here at the side of me is a new computer system a new, uh, a new tower unit um, which will give us a lot more uh, processing power basically so hopefully we'll be able to do a lot more in the on the show in the near future it will give us more more options to do things so that should be uh, that should be interesting christopher says the dial 21 only used on the pmg 801 phone in australia yeah well i've got it on this 400 series but I think somebody's glued it in in the UK. I think it's a, I think it's a UK, uh, a UK fault. Uh, as I say, if you've enjoyed what you've uh, been uh, watching here today and you want to see more, why not join us for some extra content on Patreon? You can go here, patreon.com forward slash Andy Shed is the place to go for, to find all that extra content. <coughs> and if Patreon wasn't enough for you, remember we've got a shop as well. And andysemporium.corpress.net is the shop. That is the place to go to for that. Absolutely cracking. Right, we will be back. Uh, same time, same place next week, around about 5.30pm. That's our, our new time for the time being, a little bit earlier, because we used to start at 6. But hopefully next week... Oh, hang on. No, next week it is 6 o'clock. It is 6 o'clock, um, I think. So, yeah. Yeah, 6 o'clock next week, folks. Are you listening? 6 o'clock, put it in your diary. Andy Shed Live, back here. Slightly later time, but same place. Yeah. <coughs> and then the week after that, I think we're probably back to 5.30 again. But 6 o'clock next week. Um, and uh, we'll hopefully see how this is uh, is getting on. And we might be able to turn it back into a telephone. So it makes a nice change from having to use the, uh, having to use the acetone to put the cases back together. <coughs> I'll just have a quick look at the chat before we go. What's everybody saying? Um, uh, Christopher says the PMG 400 can have a dial 10. Um, can it? I know it can have a dial 12, but I know it could have a 10. I'm learning stuff all the time. But interestingly, over here at least, there's not much information about Australian phones in the UK. It's very difficult to find information about Australian stuff in the UK. And, <coughs> and American stuff, well, you can find a bit of information about American stuff, but it, again, it's still not as easy as it might be, let's say. I'm just clearing up on bits of sticky tape on that now that I'm talking to you. 
Um, has anybody else got any questions or anything before we go, before we call it a day for today? I'm going to go and have my tea. And yes, I am having a pizza before anybody asks. Um, if you're wanting something to watch later tonight on YouTube, or even now I think it might be happening, or it might have happened already, go and check out Everyday Astronaut, because he's been doing a live coverage this afternoon of... Uh, the first flight with passengers of Richard Branson's uh, spaceship, Richard, um, the uh, the thing that launches from the aeroplane. Uh, a weird aeroplane goes up and then drops another aeroplane from it that then fires a rocket and you go up to the edge of space on it. That's gone up this afternoon with Richard Branson on it. I don't know what's happened because <laughs> it's, it's all been happening while we've been on air. But, uh, but if you go and check out Everyday Astronaut on... Uh, YouTube um, you'll find that he's done a live stream all about it that you should be able to watch back hopefully um, other things happening tonight well not really much of anything really is there so <laughs> we'll see you same time oh sorry a slightly later time six o'clock but the same place next week um, before I go Christopher says he's filming a steam train at Lillydale station yesterday because they're removing the original station. Uh, so the GPO 640 Bell and the PMG 891 wall phone that are there will be removed along with the station. Um, and he's going to go and see if he can get the uh, Bell set and the 891 um, for the signal box. So yeah, good luck with that Christopher. Hopefully you might, uh, you might end up with another phone and a Bell set there before the week is out. Um, and next week, hopefully, we'll have that very rare 746L arrived by this time next week, if we're lucky. So hopefully that'll be on the show then. But from me, for now, thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned, because in a minute you're going to see who, who those patrons are who have supported this episode. Um, but for me, for now, have a great week ahead. Remember, look at the back catalogue of some of the old videos and that. Remember to give this one a like. And if you've not done so already, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you know when we are next on. There is going to be a midweek live show starting very soon, sometime in the next two or three weeks. So watch out for that as well. So if you've not hit that bell icon already, do hit it so you know when we're going to be on next. But for me, for now, have a fantastic week. And uh, basically, stay two metres apart, everybody, no matter what Boris says. And I'll see you soon. Bye for now.